Are you persistent in prayer? Are you passionate in prayer? Because the church at its core is a people, but it's also a people that are all about prayer. But not only are they about prayer, it says uh, after they play, prayed, the place where they were shaking, I mean, it was, there was a lot of movement going on. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The idea here is not only should be, it's about a people, the people that's praying, but it's a people who are walking in tune, in step with the Holy Spirit. And what does that mean? It means two things. You are exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit listed in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness, self-control, all those things. You exhibit in the, the fruits of the Spirit. That means those characteristics of Christ in your behavior, in your actions, in your deed. That means you look like Jesus. You act like Jesus. You're talking like Jesus. You're walking like Jesus. The fruit. So look, don't tell me that you're spirit filled and you're not trying to love folk. You don't tell me that you're spirit filled and you don't have patience. That's look, These are the things they walk out within the Spirit filled with the Spirit, exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit, but also not only is it exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit, but it also means to be operating in the gifts of the Spirit. There are a lot of gifts of the Spirit, all sorts of wonderful gifts that God wants us to use. All of us have been gifted. All of us have something. God wants you to walk in an anointing where God has anointed your gifts so that when you sing, when you preach, when you share, when you do whatever you do, God's hand is on your gift. God's power is on your gift. God's anointing is on your gift. You can do it good, but when God puts his hand on it, it's something extra with it. You can be great at it, but let God put his hand on your gift. Submit your gift unto the Lord and watch God do something. They were not only exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit in their character and their behavior, but they were walking in the gifts that God had given them to do the work of the kingdom in this world. So not only were there people, the people praying, the people walking in the spirit, the rest of the text says, and then they left out and they spoke the word of God boldly. It means they were sharing their faith. It means they were telling people about the Lord. Now, boldness doesn't mean rude. Boldness doesn't mean obnoxious. Boldness doesn't mean in an uncaring way. Boldness means that I'm not ashamed to say it when I get the chance. I'm not ashamed to look for a moment where I can tell you about what God has done for me. Boldness means I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of salvation to all that believe. I'm not ashamed to tell you, man, you ought to try Jesus. I'm not ashamed to tell you, come on to church with me. I'm not ashamed to tell you, I love the Lord all my heart, mind, soul, and strength, and God can change your life. I'm not ashamed shame to tell you that God loves you and if you want your sins forgiven God's got grace and mercy more than what your sin brings to the table he's got enough grace and mercy to erase it enough grace and mercy to forgive it enough grace and mercy to turn your life around being bold means I'm not ashamed to tell you what God has done for me and if he can do it for me he can do it for you uh, every time I run across a young person that saying, I don't know I'm going to be able to do it, Pastor, I say, what do you mean? When I came to the Lord, I, I stuttered, I struggled, talk, I, I couldn't halfway read, but God prayed about it. My pastor told me to pray, and I tell the young folk, I don't care what they say. You can go to college. You can go on and learn something. You can be great. You can be successful. I see, I'm not ashamed to tell it that I know it, had, it wasn't me that got me to where I am today. It, is, it hadn't been for the Lord on my side. I'm not ashamed. They walked out and said, God is working. God is moving. Get saved. Repent. Turn away from your old ways and join in and let God turn your life around. Boldness means I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. Amen. I'm not worried because people are making them scared to tell of this good news. Uh, but they said, Lord, give us boldness. And they walked out with boldness. So not only is it a people, a people praying, a people walking in the spirit, exhibiting the fruits and the gifts of the spirit, but a people who aren't ashamed to tell of God's goodness. Amen. Don't have to be rude, but you can be bold. And then I keep on, let's move a little further. And it says, that, and in verse 32, now notice sometimes, this is what I hate about Bible printers. They feel the need to always kind of break up the paragraphs and stuff. That's not how it is in the original. So this would have just kept reading. Amen. And it says, all the believers were in one heart and mind. See, they make it seem like 31 and 32 are separate. It's not. 
you can't get to all believers in one heart and mind. That's one, one accord. You can't get to that place without people who are praying, that pray, walking in the spirit, amen, walking and in, 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 in boldly proclaiming the word of the Lord. You can't, that doesn't happen. Let me go back to that bold, boldly proclaiming the word of the Lord. You can't boldly pro pro proclaim nothing, anything that you don't know. Amen. So if you don't know any word, how are you going to share some word? Amen. If you haven't learned and studied and gotten, gotten some good teaching, you might even share it wrong. So in order to be bold with it, because you can be bold and wrong, so you know, we do know that, you want to be bold and right. But there's no way you're going to get to being on one accord in one heart, soul, and mind, in one, one heart and mind. There's no way you get to that without being prayed up in the word, filled with the spirit. Without those things, it's going to be mess when folk get together. See, this is the part where it gets quiet. The church at its core is, a, is, about, is about people who have, who have had a spiritual encounter, getting together with other folk who had a spiritual encounter, growing in that spiritual encounter, trying to share with others about that spiritual encounter, and when you get lined up with God's purpose, and other folk are getting lined up with God's purpose, it's easier to walk together in unity. The problem is, is the church oftentimes is lining up with other stuff besides Jesus. See, if you line up with a denomination and you're Baptist, you might not be able to line up with somebody who's Pentecostal. If you line up with somebody who's a non-denominational, you might not be able to line up with someone who's a, who's a Presbyterian. See, oftentimes we get so hooked up on the denominations that we forget that all that stuff was added to the mix. The church at its core was a people who were following Jesus, a, a people who were serving him. And so whether you're a Baptist or a Presbyterian or a Church of God in Christ or whatever, if you're following Christ, uh, we ought to be able able to line up. Amen. And if I'm walking in the spirit and you're walking in the spirit, if you're reading the word and I'm reading the word, if you're walking through this and you're, you're trying to pray and do it, we ought to, if we're listening to the same God and talking to the same God, we ought to be able to walk together and serve the Lord. 